everyone, and especially welcome to Andy and Kapaki. I'm going to have to say last names here. Um, nice to have you back. And, huh? Yeah. Okay. Is, so for taking minutes, um, is there somebody that could take minutes until Mark um, gets situated? He's driving home. Oh, okay. we're going to just have it recorded. Sorry, we'll do that. Um, all right, so the first order of business is to approve the minutes of the September 12th meeting, which we sent out. Did everyone get a chance to read them? Mm -hmm. We have a motion to accept. I yes, move we accept the meeting of the minutes as presented. And I'll second. Very good. Any discussion? Other than very, thank you, Mark, they're excellent. The very intimidating minutes to think about having to take minutes after that. I know, <laughs> they're very thorough. Um, he, does, he does a very good job. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Minutes pass. Thank you. I'll put them up on the website. Um, treasurer's report, Cassandra's not here, so I'll bring that up. Um, I'm going to start by, I, I'm going to start by um, letting you know that Alex Villadu has withdrawn his application. Um, he talked to me just before the meeting and, and he said that he looked through what the standards of the Secretary of the Interior are in terms of restoring historic buildings. And he also looked at what might be involved in a historic preservation, and they are not um, what he's interested in doing right now. So um, he withdrew his application. Um, okay, thank you. So um, this is, here, I'm going to share the screen. And I'm going to make it a little bigger, I think. Um, Sorry, let me just get this. No, it's not changing. Well, I don't know if you can see it too well, but I'll read it. The, um, right now we have total in the CPA fund is 3,061,000. Of that 700,000 has already been approved for projects. So we have two million, just under 2,400,000. Um, 500 of that we try not to spend, we keep it in a reserve. 183 of that is set aside for housing. So we have 90,000 historic, I'm sorry, 90,000 open space, 14.7 in um, historic set aside and the general funds a million, just under a million six. Mm -hmm. uh, and we did collect the first quarter of this year's um, real estate tax surcharge, which is just under 80,000. Unfortunately, some of that disappeared with the earnings in the market, um, but we're still about 75,000. So we're on track to earn, um, to bring in with a surcharge what was brought in last year, mm -hmm. um, at least the 304,000, and then whatever the state match will be. So there's, there's where we're starting from. Good. Any questions on that? No, that's very good. Right. Thank you, Mary, for doing such a good job. No, well, you're welcome. Um, so the first application we have is, and I know Alan Weinberg is on the line, is um, for the um, cemetery at the Hockenham Cemetery, some 25,000 more to finish the fencing project and also be able to do the two alternatives, which was reinforced turf along the edge of the road where cars often park and then a memorial using the stones that were put in w, under the WPA in the 1930s, um, the original stone wall, making a pillar at the southern end um, to kind of commemorate that. Um, do we have a motion to accept it or then we can do a discussion? Yeah, or, I'll, move. I'll move to accept it. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Um, so we we are we are we are voting to uh, present it to town meeting as described, correct? Correct. And you know it's interesting. I I know in our I'm wondering if we should vote to recommend 
um, because that's the way it's written in the warrant is that we recommend it as opposed to approve it. I don't know if that makes it. Yeah, easy. I don't think it matters, but if you want to say recommend, that's fine. And as long as it says that there's a time limit on it. Um, so I, um, I can bring that up. Mary, that actually speaks to a question which is actually moot now that um, Alex Bellado has withdrawn his, but I was going to ask, could we send it to town meeting, not re recommending it, but just saying we're bringing it for your decision? No, is we're, that gate we're basically, been? we're gatekeepers. So our job is first, right. is it allowed under the CPA law? And second, do we think it's a good fit for Hadley? So it has to get an, a, a majority approval by the CPA committee to go on to town meeting. Mm -hmm. Does that Thank you. That's, that is clear. Thanks. Yeah. Um, let me just change this. You know, it's been a couple of years since I've been on the committee, but um, in the years prior to that, that was my understanding that we would... Um, if we didn't recommend it, we would at least say, it, it, we, you know, we would say that it meets the criteria um, uh, for CPA funding um, without a, necessarily a qualitative recommendation and then perhaps speak to the project on its behalf. It's, you know, it, as Andy Morris Friedman said last week, you know, town meeting time is valuable. And if we really feel it's not a good fit for Hadley, I think it's, this is a good place for it to stop personally. Right. Um, yeah, that, that's the way I feel. And I think that if you say recommend, that's fine. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. I'll share the screen again. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Andy's right that we've, we've kind of moved away from that. That uh, I think I found that our voting to send it to town meeting is taken by town meeting as an implicit recommendation. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how we've moved. Yeah. Hadley, Hadley Media has a question. Oh, okay. Is that under the chat? Uh, no, I see it. Oh. oh, no. That's my cursor. That's a hand. Oh, no. No, it's not. Oh, no, it is. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. You'll, you'll get the hang of it, Edward. Was the notification that uh, that we were recording on a different device? It wasn't a question or comment uh, at the beginning of the meeting. There he is. Mark. Hi, Mark. Welcome. So mm -hmm. here's um, here's what I put up for the article to see if the town will vote to transfer. We don't quite have the full twenty five thousand under the historic set aside, so that's why. It's 22,000, and this is assuming that we do the clawbacks we're voting on later. So if not, I'll change it. But 22,760 from the historic and 2,240 from the general fund for the purpose of completing the replacement of the stone fence, reinforce the turf where cars park and create a pillar to memorialize the previous stone wall created by the WPA at the historic Hockenham Cemetery. This is in addition to the 83,000 previously approved for the replacement of the stone fence at the 2021 ATM and the 2022 ATM, and to authorize the select board to enter into such agreement or agreements on behalf of the town as may be necessary, including a provision requiring said funds to be expended within two years of the date of town meeting approval. Any unspent funds will automatically be returned to the foregoing Community Preservation Act fund by that date. Very good, thank you. Okay, I have a question. Yes. Um, the way that's written, automatically returned, that means that town meeting won't have to vote to return it. You know, right? I would think so, but when you ask the treasurer and, and um, the administrator's office, they say, no, we still need a vote. But that's how they worded it, okay. so I didn't change it. Okay, I would just wondered. But yeah. That can all be part of the consent decree, it the is. consent part. If it yeah, is. so it doesn't take extra time, really. All right. Any other discussion? Uh, Alan, how does that sound to you? Good. Okay, well, well I, already, I already moved that we accept it, so we're waiting for a second. 
No, we had one. Oh, we did? We had, we yeah, had yeah, we did. Oh, great. Excellent. Any other discussion? Nope. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? All right. Motion carries. That's unanimous, right? Yes, it is. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you, folks. And I'll I'll present that on town meeting. Okay, good okay, luck, Alan. Very good, Alan. You you know that you're gonna. We're just a, uh, a committee that recommends spending this much money. You're gonna have to sell it at town meeting, correct? I I understand. Okay. Next, we have um, Hopkins Academy, and Paul. Thank you for being with us. Um, and I see Dr. McKenzie is on the. Zoom as well. So welcome to both of you. Um, this one will probably have, there's there's a couple parts to this. One is, um, and we can, you know, have motions first and discuss it, but one is, you know, looking at it and then also how to fund it. So it's kind of a, um, involves several stages here. Mm -hmm. um, would anyone like to make a motion to um, recommend the Hopkins Academy project as presented. I will make a motion <laughs> to present, to recommend the Hopkins Academy. Um, and again, this, well, I guess, let me, before I do that. Well, maybe, yeah, if you- if, Maybe we should discuss it first in case we change the- Well, isn't that- isn't that the uh, Robert's rules that you make a motion, you second, and then you discuss? And that's my understanding, yes. So, so I think we need to do so that. If, if you do the motion, it. I will second it. And then okay, we can discuss. I make the motion um, to accept this, and Mark will second it. Because you can always, you know, I, I have made motions in other meetings that I end up voting against because after discussion, I change my mind. So. Exactly. Yeah, but we want to be able to discuss it. Right. Um, so we have a motion um, for a million. Let me pull it up here. For a million six eleven four hundred, and that was to do everything on the phase two of Hopkins, um, and we have funds to do that. Um, without bonding, it leaves us pretty lean for the rest of 2023 and into 2024, but we do have funds to do that. Um, and we also have an option to bond, so which would leave us more flexibility in the near future. Um, I know Stuart Saginaw had said there's a few things that are a little more um, Question, I don't know about questionable, but a little more of a stretch. Um, a lot of this is right with the open space and, and what's allowed. And Hopkins has a big project ahead to do lots of things. And this is the only one that can fall under CPA. It's not a historic building, um, but the open space recreation part does. Um, what are people's thoughts? I'll, I'll, I'll lead off. Um, First, by saying that this is our biggest and most complicated project, and I hope everyone in the committee will give their opinion um, and be part of the discussion. Um, Mary, do you want to talk about the project as presented first and then talk about the financing? Or you want to do both at the same time? That might be more organized than just popcorning all around. Yes, because we don't know how much we're financing until we've talked about Good. it as well. Okay. All right. Um, uh, I would prefer that the proposal be amended to withdraw funding for the scoreboards and the parking lot, which is $140,000. Uh, and then I would support it. What are your and thoughts about the concrete pad as well? I think if the pad is for the bathroom, then it's okay. If it's for the concession stand, then it's not okay. So you said it was gonna be a bathroom and you've never lied to me before. So uh, I believe you. And so I don't have a problem with that. 
that gives us a little more flexibility in terms yeah. of funding too. Yeah, I think it's one of our biggest community gathering places. Um, I think that there'll be a lot of support for it at town meeting. I think the school board will really get its people out. Um, I think that the, the kids deserve it. Um, and if it preserves that land uh, as useful uh, fields, parkland, open space, we should go for it. It's just those two items that I question. And those two items are about 10% of the total or a little under. So that, that kind of is what we like to see the organization put some funds in that they're mm -hmm. doing as well. Um, Although, as I said last time, that's, that's less important to me because it's all town money. Mm -hmm. It all comes from the same well. Right. Um, and if the school board puts in 10%, the only difference is that the state isn't putting in half of that, which is what we get from CPA. Right, or hopefully half. Right, right, or whatever, 30%, whatever. Okay, so I think that's it for me. Thank you, Andy. And I, I'm not, let's hear from everyone before I do amendments, if that's okay. That's fine. Um, okay. Um, if I could just ask, uh, Andy, for clarification, you said you would support it if, if they removed the 140,000 for the scoreboards, and was it the asphalt of the parking lot? Correct. Okay. And then I, the line striping. You support and the striping, but you support yeah. the asphalt for the walkway. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's approved use. Yes. Is, it it I, improves I, handicapped it, access. It's recreational. Right. right. I don't, I don't, I can't support this article with as, as written because of the scoreboards. We're going to, our committee is going to recommend this to town meeting. And if, if we recommend it, then town meeting is going to say yay or nay. And we have to go by our decision based on the attorney general's say so. And I think that if the scoreboards and the uh, are included, we're going to be in big trouble. We're going to be in deep doo doo, and I don't think we as a committee want that. Um, so I'm. I thank you very much, Andy, for su suggesting that, and you beat me to the punch. So I would. I would kind of say. I think I'm going to abstain on this on this one because of the cost involved and uh, uh, what we're trying to do to the, with the town of Hadley. Okay, thank you, Edwin. You want? I ask a question. Yes. To, um, the scoreboards. It seemed like the reason that there were a problem from Stewart's comments was because it wasn't going to be for everyone in the community it was just going to be for the students is that the is that what we're concerned about well for i think it was I, I think it was it was basically the, their benefit was athletics and uh, which was the school and not the community at large and then i think at the last meeting amy spoke to the fact that more than just parents of students come which makes it a little gray. I mean, if we wanted to support those, that was the way I saw it. Does that help answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I'm I am on board with um, striking the parking lot, striping, and the paving. But I kind of would like to see us vote on those two things separately because I think that it is an important part of the community um, as a whole to have those scoreboards, and I'd like to see it included. Yeah, but that's not CPA funding. Uh, it's it's not appropriate for CPA funding to do those things. Uh, the CPA is supposed to do. Um, if you look at the page thirty six of the law that says what the CPA fund can be used for, it's that's not one of them. And I really can't support that because if, if that's included, then I really can't support it. I'm sorry, I just can't. We're gonna get in trouble if we recommend it to town meeting. 
the way the way that it was presented with the scoreboards and the striping and the paving and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna get in big trouble. Andy, go ahead. Uh, if I can jump in. Uh, I like Denise's idea about voting on them separately. And when I make my amendments, I'll do it one at a time. But they won't be voted on separately at town meetings. So how do we? They, they, don't, they, they, don't, they don't have to be. We could, okay. we could vote to doing. eliminate the scoreboard and not the parking lot. We could vote to eliminate the parking lot and not the scoreboard. Okay. We could vote to eliminate both or eliminate neither. Okay. And then it goes to town meeting, whichever way our committee decides. Right. So basically, we're looking at Hopkins A, B, and C. A is the is the is the core that I think everyone agrees on. B is the is the scoreboards, and C is the parking and striping. So you're you're asking that we as a committee vote on A, B, and C. Sure. I like that. I think that makes sense. Paul and Ann, does that? Sound good to you? Uh, I'd just jump in. It does to me. I would just ask, do you folks in that proposal, part of the addition in the proposal, um, part of the presentation had the site plan and the items are numbered. I just want to make sure you're talking about striking 24 and 26. Do you know what I mean when I say numbered? Is, are those- 27 a also. And 27, that's what I'm looking for. Six and 27, yes. 24, 26, and 27. Keeping perfect. 25, keeping 25. Okay, and, perfect, and, thank you. And, and uh, 28 was for the bathrooms, not the uh, concession stand? It's a uh, concession building, but. Yeah, just to bring that up, just in full transparency, I don't think Andy, uh, both Andy's, I don't think it's been fully defined and that's a, a bit more speculative the thought was we, we obviously haven't budgeted for either now but rather we thought since we'd be out there let's put the pad down and then we can build something in the future but if there's a restriction from using that pad in the future for concessions we might want to pull that out too because i don't want that i don't want to be limited to that and that we could just save some money here and then if we want to put concessions in a bathroom down the road we could have a future fundraising effort for that I, I can't commit. I don't want to commit now. And it, it, so it's better just maybe to take it off. I don't know, Andy, what do you think? I know I'm Another option might be if you said that you think the, the men's room, the women's room, and the concessions are all about the same size. So if you wanted to shrink that to two thirds, mm. and say, you know, you're asking us to do the slab for the bathrooms and you right. do a, a fundraiser for the slab for concessions. You, know, right. you, you could amend your application. I'm not amending it for you. I'm just saying that's an option. Yeah. Well, and, and also though, it's not a huge expense. And if you're looking at uh, you know phases down the road here, you may find that uh, as, you know it's great to look at it on paper, but once you you put it on on the ground, you might decide that that location isn't the best suited for right. uh, what you're after. If it's a, slightly up the slope or what have you. Yeah. And and. As an architect, I would never advise pouring concrete before you have plumbing in place, but you know. Well, exactly, right? So that's it, Mark. So maybe, maybe it's just simpler to, to remember. It's sort of either we get it all scoped out and, and for, you know, put it all in the package or we don't. And I, I want to speak to the fact, uh, your statement, Andy Morris Friedman, I, I appreciate we've never misrepresented or lied to you before and we certainly don't want to misrepresent anything now so i just rather it was clean and clear and there's if there's any reservation on your part um then i, I would consider i'm trying to deprive the school of money but that if there are reservations clearly about 24 26 and 27 and if there's any reservations about 28 to the points that have made we can also look to the future of fundraising for that. Um, I just, I don't know how you feel about that, Paul, but I certainly don't want people to feel as though they were in any way yeah. uh, misled or anything, so. Yeah. Great. If you decide you wanna put a public bathroom in the fields, you can come back to us. Right. Uh, right. And, and we can fund it. Yeah, as, and as Mark said, you know, there's certainly would be extra site work prior to, prior to uh, actually pouring the paint. Right. Oh. I'm, 
I did have one other. Go ahead. Andrew, I did have a question about um, public access, and pardon me if I missed uh, anything in the recent meetings, but way back when, uh, and you all are still going out of that, and tip my hat to you. <laughs> Um, you know, a, a part of the original um, right, meeting as well. That. Yeah. Um, but one of the requirements has been for a few other uh, projects like Zaturka Park and the like is to maintain accessibility. I know at one point they had talked about fencing uh, around uh, the facility at Hopkins. And I know that that's stricken here, but as, uh, as Stewart's comments say, um, School committees change over time, administrations change over time, and you know it because this is CPA public money. We want to uh, ensure that public access is uh, maintained to gate at things at, like the walking path. Um, we want to make sure that you know that doesn't that accessibility doesn't change. So I don't know if we want to consider any language in this uh, going forward as Stewart's recommendation to say you know we're. Yeah, because I do remember that being called out on other projects to make sure that yeah, it is the intention, it's fully stated that um, no, we're never going to gate it off, uh, keep the public out. Uh, what do you think about that? You asking us, Andy? Yes, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's, it's a fair question for like, the future. And I don't know, since this is town land and a school property, I'm not sure what we can do to legitimately restrict or confine future school committees from making decisions at the town. But I will say, and Annie, you can speak to this. I, I see it as it, it's highly been, been used. And I haven't noticed or any, I haven't heard of any uh, negative interactions or uh, limitations. I think people have been respectful that, you know, if it's during school hours, they can, if they're discreet, they can use it. I've certainly been there for lots of after school sporting events where it clearly is getting used by the community. And I think that's the whole intent, right? We, it, I think it's been more popular than we'd even hoped. And so we keep that way. I don't know if we have formal rules other than there is a sign saying, you know, public access allowed when school's out essentially, and if it's not being used by the children, but I think even that is more flexible. So I think, I think that's acceptable. I think that if you post the hours when someone can use it and not during school hours, that's okay. And people have been really, really respectful. Yeah, the only, only reason I brought it up was again, early on in this process, there was discussion yeah. about fencing and you know, I'm glad to see that that's long gone. Yeah, and, no. and, and uh, Andy Kay, I just want to say that my minutes uh, skipped over a lot of content from two weeks ago. And in that meeting, there was a discussion about hours of access. And um, Paul was very good to clarify for me then that they have signs now that are a policy now that these the fields are open to the community after school hour you know when the school is not in you know they have a, a responsibility to protect our children when they're at school sure. uh, before and after you know you can go out there so i'd say the biggest issue we've encountered in the last few years is, um if there's quite a bit of snowmobile traffic as you probably all know amongst there and so there was a gate we're ensuring that that's open we don't want any accidents um and I did work with the local snowmobile association. We went out and we signed it because we don't, what we were getting that we don't want is them going over the asphalt, especially when there's low snow because it can damage the asphalt. Um, and they've been very respectful of that, right? And, you know, I know we've had poor snow conditions the last couple of years, but I think I foresee that's something we, we keep doing is go out there, kind of sign them around the asphalt or so they don't have to cross it. I, I want to say something about the scoreboard. Um, I just, reread Stewart's comments on that. And again, he's, you know, the coalition to be a resource for us um, with suggestions, but that's, you know, it's our, our decisions. But he, he isn't objecting to the scoreboards because they're not allowed under the CPA law. He's more just commenting that they aren't necessary in terms of like the backboard, he says, for the, the basketball hoops are necessary to play basketball. And, um, but he said it's you know it, it's not ne maybe necessary if there's limited funds and we can't do everything that might be an area that we don't want to cover. Um, so that's you know I, 
I want to clear clarify that a little bit. It doesn't, you know. So it sounds like it's more of a discretionary gray area than a restricted. Right. Okay. Not, he, he did object to the parking, um, yes. the parking lot since it was public parking the asphalt, but the, the scoreboard was more just because the project could go on without it if we if we don't feel we can fund it all. Um, and I think, I know when we're done with this before we vote, maybe we should talk about the funding because I think that that's part of that's part of the picture, you know. We do have limited funds, and just want people comfortable with um, with what we're voting on in terms of in terms of the money as well. Um, does anyone have any other comments on on the project itself? Um, well, I would just mention if anyone wants to support the parking that I, I think I briefly mentioned uh, two weeks ago, there is an argument if you wanted to say that because we're moving the ball field and reorienting it, we have to regrade. And so, and so they're not just adding parking to do parking, it's being disturbed by the ball field use. So you could say, if you're looking for a place to hang your hat, that this is a, um, outfall from the ball field work. So it, you could say it was necessary. You could, like when you have to paint a building because you reworked it, you know, you wouldn't paint it just outright, but you can rework it and then have to paint. So it is making the project whole. Um, I, I, I can see that argument as well. Um, I'm gonna, I'm going to, um, pull up the funds again. And um, just going back to that parking and striping, Paul, um, remind me again, are you adding any parking or it's just being restored? I mean, my, my, my sense is it's just being restored. Yeah. That's correct. Which makes me feel like I, I'm leaning more towards supporting it because it's not something you know it's it's something that our projects you know because you have limited area to fit all those fields it, it impacts your existing parking and it seems to make sense in my mind to repair the parking that gets uh, disturbed by the regrading so just thinking out loud yeah that's a great point Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. So we have, um, can you guys see this well enough? Mm -hmm. I can get a little bigger. Make it 150. Yeah. So here's what we have right now. Right. Um, so currently we have $3,061,569. Correct. correct. And we have potential to claw back, which we'll be going over later, 49,000, right. which brings us up another 49,000 on top of that. Right. It's good to look at the available funds because Correct. the 700,000 is set aside. Um, right. And then, sorry. Um, and I have in here also what we've already proved, which is the Hakanam cemetery of the 25,000. So the rest of it is the full amount. If we if we voted on the full million six, um, we'd be going, we'd be dropping down to 775,000 available, which 208 is from, is for housing set aside. And then mm -hmm. our 500,000 we try not to dip into leaves us 67,000. Now, can you, we'll be collecting- can I'm sorry, what? Can you slide it back so we can see the lines on oh, the left? Of course, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thanks, yep, yep. Um, we're gonna get our 300,000 from the surcharge for the town. We've already collected 79,000 of that. So we have the rest coming in. So I just wanted to look at what we're gonna be having. A lot of it's in November, um, but this is what we expect to have with 0% state match. 
would bring us up to 107,000 um, for projects next year, unless we agree to dip into the 500,000. And then if we were to get a 100% state match, you know, this is zero, this is 100%, we'd be back up to 317,000 on top of our 500. And we rarely have gone over 300,000 in, um, in awards or recommendations rather at a annual, at a meeting. Um, and then this is through June 30th, and then it would start again for the second half of 2023 for fiscal year 24. So we can fund this without bonding, um, mm -hmm. but it does limit our flexibility perhaps. If we got a big project, for example, Brussels School was presented and, and voted in, um, we might be looking at bonding next year anyways. Um, The man that spoke with us, David Eisenthal, last time did do up um, a scenario. He had estimated if we were to bond this fall, the interest rates would be about 3.25 to 3.75, depending on the term. However, it wouldn't be bonded till probably spring of 2024. So they used higher rates. Linda um, Sanderson went over this with me. A million dollar bond for 10 years would be a yearly payment of 124,000. 15 years would be a yearly payment of 92,000. If we bonded even more, a million seven, we're getting up much higher figures, 212,000 and 160,000. What the bonding would do would give, put a million, say we did the million, this puts a million back in here, which certainly gives us flexibility. However, we do build this up over time. Um, so it's, you know, we, depending on the state match, um, we're somewhere between 107 and 317 in addition to the 500,000 plus putting more into uh, set asides. So we're, you know, before long we're, we're back up there. Um, not as high as we've been, but, but we're in, you know, we have funds. So I just wanted to show that um, we do need to figure it out, but we can vote on what we're we can vote on what we want to approve, but I I think it's important to see, you know, we do have funds to cover it, but it does limit our availability to do a lot of things in the future, um, near future. Um, and if we do have a big project, we can look at bonding next year. The town is bonding Bond other things. Year. And if we do the have a big project, we can look at bonding, bonding next year. Mm -hmm. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Mary. There seems to be a feedback loop, Joyce. Are you, are you able to mute? Hi, Mary. Say that again. We're getting a feedback. I was wondering if you could either silence your sound or mute. I can, yes. Okay. Let's see if that does it. Thank you, Joyce. Yeah. Um, what were you saying, Mary? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we do have the option to bond in the future if a big project comes forward. So it. Um, well, my, 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 my suggestion is that we move ahead with talking in the project and vote on the motion to accept it as presented. And then if it doesn't pass as presented, then we go over the amendments and then talk about the bonding. If it, if it passes. I'm not That's, sure you can do that. If you vote it down, I'm not sure you get to vote. Don't you vote on the amendments first? Um, uh, is that how you want to do it? That's fine. It doesn't matter how we do it. Yeah, no, I would assume that you vote, you have to vote on the amendments and then vote on the project as amended. Right. Well, then I would like to make a motion to amend the cost of the project based on the items that we enumerated before. Can we go through the numbers again and then so, figure out how much it'll be? The, um, the scoreboard, and the again, scoreboard. it depends how much we're including in that. The scoreboard is 100,000. The asphalt yeah. paving is 39,006. The line striping is 350. And the concession stand is 64,800. Um, 
Just so Mary, I come up with a total of, if you remove all of those 204, 750, if you deduct those from the proposal that was 1.6 million, essentially the proposal was 1611387. If you strike all those articles, then it's uh, 1406637. That's removing all four items and reducing the total cost by 204,750. Um, thank you, Annie. Mary, are we moving towards voting on the amendments already? 60 because, because I, um, I, I have not shared my thoughts. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark. Um, That's okay. We have, we don't have a second, so please go ahead and share your thoughts. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, I started along with with Andy and Edwin um, that if those items were um, explicitly excluded by the state, then I was not going to cross that line. But with the clarification from Stuart that they are more of not necessary but not unacceptable. Um, I remember from two weeks ago, we, uh, I asked a question if this was, um, you know, I, I was asking Paul if, you know, I don't know the history of, of the school projects and if, is this a big one and we're not gonna see one like this again for 10 or 15 years or they do these every, you know, they, they're rolling. And the, the answer was that this is, a big push to kind of get these done and they shouldn't have to be touched again for um, the foreseeable future. And that influences me that I, I would like to support them in investing in our kids' um, well-rounded educations of you know, academics and athletics and building community, especially coming out of COVID when everyone's so fractured and in their homes if we can do outdoor activities. So I'm leaning towards when we get to, to the, um, the, the add-ons, I'm leaning towards supporting the, uh, definitely the uh, paving, uh, possibly the concrete depending on, but I think, we've, I think we're, we're gonna take that out because it would just cost more to modify it than they would say putting it in now. And I think um, I think I'm I'm leaning towards the scoreboards um, since it's not a forbidden. And remembering what Amy said two weeks ago about um, the community um, coming out to this, not just the um, parents of the students. So that was my two cents. I. I, I, I'm in line with Mark. I think, I think the paving is necessary because it's being destroyed by the project. Um, and I think the scoreboards, I elevate Hopkins um, in, in its programs and, and, and it's when team, visiting teams come in. And, and also I think Paul had said it was used for some, could be used for some community events as well. It wouldn't just necessarily be Hopkins. Um, it could be some other um, things. I agree with taking out the concrete stand. It's, it's something easy to add later. And like Andy said, you could come back to us if needed. And so I, I, I would be in line with Mark. Um, Joyce, I, I see your hand raised. Please unmute and you're welcome to, welcome to speak. Um, good evening. I've been trying to get on for since you started your meeting and I've had a heck of a time. Um, but anyway, I uh, appreciate all that you have uh, taken under consideration. Um, having been on school committee, the beginning of my political career for 15 years, um, the fields have always been um, something on the back burner that we've always talked about and in doing and uh, acquiring property that we did from um, 
uh, where the divines live right now. We did acquire that property back then with intentions of expanding our fields and uh, doing more for our kids and and, and in that nature. Um, but it has it as it has re resolved and revolved. Um, actually, more people in the community seem to be using those fields, not just our school students, um, but many younger younger students come in our little leagues and our lassie leagues and uh, other soccer teams and things of that nature. And it really, in the tracks that they put around there, I see people going there all the time and using that track. Um, it's not just a school project. It actually is a community project, which I think falls under the CPA guidelines um, of use that we certainly would be able to use. Um, that's my own feeling. Um, it's been probably long overdue. I know it's a big price tag, um, but we have all put in our tax money and whatever. And I know in the final end, it'll be the uh, people at town meeting that will vote on this. Um, so it's not really relevant whether what I have said, but it, it, it makes sense right now. Um, we should have done it years ago when the price probably wouldn't be what it is today. But um, if we can put money into the Turka field um, and we've used CPA funds for up there, and I, I think there's a bigger use for it at Hopkins Academy. Um, friends of Mount Warner have used our, the CPA money. And I just think that, you know, this would be a good investment for our town and our family and our kids um, to be able to expand those fields. So, you know, that's what I take from it. So that's it. Thank you, Joyce. Appreciate your comments. Right, thank you. Appreciate you being here. Um, and one more question, if I might, of uh, Paul and Annie. Um, and I don't know that this would sway my decision, but it might sway others. Um, do you foresee that the uh, scoreboard operation could, you know, you could loan an operator for non-school events, like if, you know, Lassie League or whatever was going to be, is, or would those just be big blank turned off um, signs during other, I mean, I'm not. I'm not asking you to say no. We definitely will, or just if you think that that's a, a policy maintenance issue. And you want to speak to that? Uh, generally speaking, which Mark, you've already stated the obvious that, of course, when there's questions about facility use, even Paul can't speak unilaterally to that. The school committee makes those determinations, but I can tell you historically that we have worked very closely with the town to support all kinds of community events. And recently, even with our facilities use policy, have worked with Park and Rec directly to see how we can amend our facilities use procedures in order to benefit that town department. And so this is an example where Park and Rec, an outside organization might go through Park and Rec and Park and Rec would then say to us, this is what they're looking for and help us work that out. And, there's nothing to suggest that we wouldn't do that because we've been doing that historically, even with our existing buildings and existing um, fields and outdoor spaces around the school. So there'd be no reason why we wouldn't continue that. Uh, we would just want to make sure that anything that we did with an outside organization, that of course, at a minimum, that we were recouping any costs that might be passed on. So if the use would result in an increase in a utility bill that we were passing on costs to the, the, the users so that that Hadley taxpayers weren't incurring costs. But we've made these arrangements, as I said already, and actually recently amended building these procedures in order to benefit another town department financially. So we're very much committed to working with the town. And even just speaking briefly to that question around ensuring what Andy Kopacki brought up, which was a, a big issue when we first started this project of ensuring that the community had access to this. Um, again, we haven't had any sort of problems that um, in any sort of disputes or questions or, or issues with the community using the space. And we do take a, a pretty firm position that all of our resources are in fact town resources. Now, Mass General Law may dictate which select board or school committee makes policies regarding a particular space, 
but we really haven't. And, and Andy, you did wisely say people can change and administration can change, but I also am, am quite confident that um, there's nothing to suggest that this that the working relationship would deteriorate. And at the end of the day, um, the town does have a lot of sway on access to school department like resources, property, and other things by the mere fact that the town so generously supports its schools. You know, we, we of course we're going to work with the town. There'd be no reason it would not be in the school department's best interest to let that relationship break down. I have a suggestion for how to vote on this. Um, I'm going back to what Denise asked, if we can sort of have a few add-ons voted on, not add-ons, but particular line items voted on first, and then whatever of those line items pass, I'm talking about the scoreboards, the paving, paving and um, line striping, and then the concession pad. If we voted on those separately, and then of those which have, had majority vote, then we can vote on the whole package. Um, I'd support that. Okay. Is that, does that sound good? I, I have a, I have a question. Um, if, if we did take out any of these three, well, uh, well we're taking out the pad, right? That's pretty well, much. We, we, we can vote on that. Yes. Um, uh, but it's not, okay. Um, if we took out the scoreboards or if we took out the parking lot, could you briefly tell us how that would affect the project? Would it imperil the whole project? Would you find the funding someplace else? Would you use a cheaper scoreboard? Have you thought about it at all? Um, how do you think you'd respond? I can take a step of that, Annie. In particular on the, the scoreboards, I to me, it's just a, it's a quality issue. It's an experience issue. At, at the having spent a lot of time on athletic fields with my boys, and not only is there an inconvenience of when you don't know what the score is and everybody asking, but uh, it it just looks much more professional. And I think there's a bit of you know making sure our, our fields and and the experience is a high quality one. So if yeah, if you chose not to, I think we would look to find alternatives, figure out how to raise. If it is truly $100,000, um, you know, where would we start with one for the boys and girls to start with for varsity and then look to do JV next? But it, I think that's such an important thing. And I think the paving thing, too, essentially, if we are causing damage, um, and I took a note here to, to really dive into it with Berkshire Design to better fully understand what all that paving and the striping costs um, entail and what damage do they foresee needing to be repaired but if that were to happen damage obviously Andy we'd have to focus on that first. 39,000 does not get you much paving. No it doesn't it right and so that's the question I was going to ask is exactly where did they factor that in does that imperil if neither of those are funded Andy does that imperil the entire project no. If you do decide to use two scoreboards instead of four or something like that Please don't put them both on the boys' fields. <laughs> we one cannot on the put them both field, on the boys' field. On the girls field. We cannot do that. Yeah. No. Okay. We could. Uh, sure. We, we right. can't do that. We can't do that. We have to we never do that. Good. 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 Equitable Good. 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 allocation. Good. Okay. Great. Are we? I was a bit surprised by that cost, to be honest. Twenty-five thousand dollars. But Prussia Design does this all around the region, so they know the cost better than. I, every, everything's really expensive these yeah, days. That is yeah true. and and you've got conduits going out there and you've got concrete That's true. and you've got you know so um are we any more discussion um so i'd i'll start with the scoreboards um, I move that we approve the four scoreboards for $100,000 as a subset of the project. I would second that. Any further discussion? I think All that, uh, oh, I was okay. just going to add that if you've been to a few of the other communities here who've had some upgrades that have, uh, you know, field upgrades and, and along scoreboards, it really does change the experience for not only the players, but the uh, all the parents in the community that are involved in the game. So uh, I'm supporting that. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 
So we have four, four eyes. All those opposed? One I'm opposed. gonna abstain on this one. And one abstain. So four eyes, one no. We're one and one. With um, Andy Morris Friedman as the no, mm -hmm. and Edwin the um, abstain. Correct. So it's in. Yes. So it is in. Okay. Um, next, I'll move that we approve the thirty-nine thousand six hundred asphalt parking and the three hundred and fifty line striping. I would second that. Oops. Denise, that you're breaking up. Oh, sorry. I was just seconding it. Oh, thank you. Discussion. I I would just re it, reiterate that I believe it's as I understand it, it would just be restoring the parking that's already there after they move that one ball field further east and turn it. They have to, you know, there's a little bit of a hill going down to the field. And so that grading has to be done. And so I, I support it. That's what it appears on the rendering. It's not, it's not adding capacity that it's re, uh, just returning it to its original shape. Right. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. So we have four ayes. All those opposed? Two. Andy and Edwin. Mm -hmm. Andy Morris Friedman. And that's good. We don't want to just be a rubber stamp uh, agreeing all the time. No? Absolutely. We, why have, we're a committee. we have diverse opinions, and that's why we're here. Right. So I think that because I, I'm going to move just so that we can have a discussion and vote, I'm going to move the 64,680 for the concrete pad. I'm sorry, are you you're moving to approve it? Yes, to vote on it. T to vote, all right. To recommend so it, yes. I recommend. would second that we vote on approving. I'm not, yeah. I just think in order to vote on the whole thing, we need to address this. Right. Um, I'm not in favor of it, but I, I wanna have it um, be able to be voted on. Um, only because it does it, it 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 does seem kind of unnecessary at this point, um, and I think it's something that could be added and and thought out and decided on before we before we do it. The rest of it seems very much thought out and and important for right now. So those are my thoughts. Mm. Any other discussion? All those in favor. All those opposed? Nay. And abstain. So it was unanimous in opposing <laughs> the um, concrete pad. So it's zero, six, zero. Right. All right. Now for the big one, um, I'll move, I'm just moving these to move this process along. Um, I move that we approve the um, I move that we approve the application um, as amended. So it includes the four scoreboards. It, inclu it includes line 24, the scoreboards. It includes line 26 and 27, the asphalt paving and parking, but it does not include the concrete pad. So instead of a million six hundred, that a million six eleven four hundred, it's going to be a million five forty six. Um, I'm going to say seven hundred. If that's okay to round it to the nearest, it's all an estimate right down to the penny anyway. So a million five hundred forty six thousand seven hundred. Mm -hmm. 
Um, were you making a? Uh, yes, I, I may. I move that we recommend um, the Hopkins Academy application phase two, subtracting out um, line twenty eight, the concrete pad for the concession building. We're going to have discussion on bonding after. Mm -hmm. I would second that. Right. We're yeah. right. How we fund it is next. Okay. Right. Or do we just, well, yeah, so I'm seconding it, so we can go into discussion if the chairperson says, says so. And Yes, and, absolutely. Let's discuss, and we can so, include on how to pay it if that's, if that's going to make a difference in people voting one way or the other. I think that we need to discuss the payment as well. Um, but so, if you're, you, so you've basically taken the result of the last three and say, let's vote on that. So are we voting on that and then how to fund it? Or do we discuss the funding now? I guess is my question. We have a motion right now. We have a motion to approve. I, I My motion was to approve the phase two application less line 28. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And we can discuss that. And in the discussion can be how to, pay how to fund it. it. Okay. Yeah, I think that that makes sense because that might be <clears throat> somebody's decision on voting for it or not. Um, that was very efficient. Want me to, well, let's any other discussion on the project itself, not not including the funding. Let's go. Can I? Would you like me to pull up the figures again? Would that be helpful? Or. Let's, how do people feel about bonding? I mean, we can, we have enough funds. Um, we'd still have- I just have, like to, oh, go ahead, Andy, after you. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm happy to lead off. Um, I've really gone back and forth on this. And I think, uh, you know, I'm a chess player. And so I like to think a couple of moves ahead. And although I was, uh, cautious about the bonding. Now I think I'm in favor of it. And here is why. Um, if we bond most of this, like we bond a million and we use cash for the rest, um, it requires a two thirds vote at town meeting, which I think the school board can get. I think they'll bring their people to the meeting and they'll have enough people and that it'll pass. Although it'll be more difficult than a simple majority uh, if we just paid for it out of funds we already have. Then we're saving money for a potential future project, which is going to be much more difficult to get a two thirds vote for, hmm. considerably more difficult. And if we want that this hypothetical second project to pass, we can't bond for that one because I don't think there'll be town support. And that's why I've changed my mind about the bonding. And I support Mary's idea that you discussed last meeting of uh, borrowing a million and using cash for the rest. And I want to say, I know um, David Eisenthal had said you want a, mil a minimum of a million, but Linda said we, we combine these all together. She said, a, you can bond for 400000 because it's not a standalone thing. The school is bonding quite a few other things. There's a <clears throat> new building <laughs> coming potentially. There's other road work being done that the town is getting bonds for. So they just combine them. It's not like CPA has to be at least a million on its own. So we, you know, even the million isn't, isn't a guarantee, you know, isn't something that has to be that figure. It could be less because, um, you know, it won't, it isn't, it will be combined. In fact, it probably won't, I mean, this money won't be spent till for at least a year, year and a half anyways by the school. So, you know, they, they wouldn't bond it right away anyways. Um, and they would combine it. So we really, it, you know, the figures I showed of, um, I mean, the million would be, if we did 10 year, would be 118,000 a year, um, which still, we rarely spend even what's left, um, 
in a year. Um, and then 15 years would be 85,000. No, that's sorry. Those are the lower interest figures. 124,000 and 92,000 for 10 years or 15 years for a, a million dollar bond. Potentially if we did 500,000, it'd be half that. So we, you know, we have a lot of flexibility. Um, but you're right, Andy, thank you. It is too, there's not a separate ballot vote for a CPA bond. It only has to be voted on at town meeting, but it is two thirds vote. Mark, mm -hmm. I see your hand up. Um, two things, one question for Andy and then one comment myself. What were you, um, I, I was scribbling notes. I, you talked about two projects. One would garner two thirds vote and the other one you thought would not. What were the, what were you referring to? Uh, the bonding issue. Um, right. The second potential project is the Russell School project. He, he oh, meant that if oh, we, right. if we're bonding, it needs two thirds, but if we cover it, yeah. I, they may, either way, we'd probably have to look at bonding. Mm -hmm. um, what is, okay. wait a sec, Andy. Mark, what was your second? And, and so my other comment was about the, or a comment or a question. If, if I understand, you know, I'm scribbling notes, so I'm not necessarily following everything on your spreadsheet. Um, you know, there was a bottom line of $3 million, but you said, look at the available. And then there's, there's general available, there's general reserve. Um, do we have to would we have to wipe out the open space first before we can go to general on this? Correct. We do that anyways. Um, we do that anyway. So, so if we don't, all right. So, so there's nine ninety thousand nine sixty five in open space, right. and then the rest of it will come out of the available general. So right. if we're going to bond a million, then there's there's a half a million five forty six seven hundred. That's going to wipe out the ninety, and it's going to take a bunch of the general fund uh, mm -hmm. available. Okay, right. I I was just trying to understand that. Instead of sixty, instead of after town meeting, instead of having sixty-seven thousand in um, here, we'd have a million sixty-seven thousand in in general available. Um, we, we have wiped out open space, historics wiped out by the Hockenham fence. We can't touch housing with either of these projects. Right. We try to keep 500,000 that we don't dip into. Um, so that leaves us, actually, I didn't change this. Um, we get to, this is 64,000, sorry. Oh, so you're saying potential. So that's what it would be if we fund this, that's what will be left after I just changed it by the, the 64,000 that we didn't include. So after, if we vote this without any bonding, we'll have an, an available, a total of really 631,000 still. Um, before- Mary, that, does, does that 1.1522675 represent the updated number? The, huh? uh, the one- The, 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 the school project to, to and, the left. To the left, the uh, one five. Yeah, is that? No, state? it should be one uh, five four six seven hundred. Sorry. It some of this is including the little bit of the rest of the Hakka, the two thousand two hundred for the Hakka and fence. Um, okay. Well, I would I would certainly like to explore the I mean, when when they first talked about bonding a few years ago, I was like uh, uh, Andy Moore three of them. I was certainly very, uh, very cautious about, uh, you know, borrowing against monies that we haven't collected yet and mm -hmm. spending it. Um, but I, I am intrigued by the thought of taking part of this project and putting it in there. I don't know if I would necessarily go with the numbers that you're breaking. So far, as I'd, I'd hate to put us that low, the available general fund balance, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if I, uh, you know, want to borrow so um, so much 
that uh, we wind up having a, a larger payoff and still have a large amount of money left over um, when we could have invested it in, in this project. Um, and to Andy's other comment about um, Russell School, um, I know it's been a couple of years since I've been on the building committee, but the numbers that I had heard back then about repairing that school, uh, that building would be off the charts compared to what we're looking at here. Um, so I don't think that, you know, saving even a half a million dollars is going to affect bonding when it comes to talking about restoring Russell School. That is, uh, you know, uh, seven figures. It's it's big money. Um, and, um, you know, 500000 isn't going to make the difference there. So uh, I would, and I don't know if, if this is where we have the discussion to say, yes, we're going to recommend that we bond, you know, half the project um, and, and keep the other. Are we making that decision uh, here? We uh, do. We make the recommendation. Okay. Um, yes, if you want to, I mean. So, okay, well then, you know, I, I would, if you could bring up that other screen again. Yes. Uh, Give me I mean, just a minute. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it not so big and fix the and adjust it for what we've done. Mary, I'm just good just to go back and clarify your the original motion you made that was that we fund the uh, application minus line twenty eight for one million five hundred and forty six thousand seven hundred thousand right that was i believe your motion but One, your motion five, four, six, seven hundred, and i did not specify how to fund it how to fund it so we would need to amend that i think to either you know um i don't know if andy was starting a motion to, to amend well, i was thinking that i'd like to look back at it but uh, okay we, sure I, yeah I yep, give me just a minute here yeah let's I just don't think that, uh, right. I mean, the motion was still pending out there on whether or not we were going to vote on the big thing. Uh, and then are we going to amend it for, you know, the motion's still there, Mary. Uh, right. I, I think it's, I think it's waiting for us to amend how we fund it. And okay. so once we revisit her shared screen, maybe one of us will make a motion let's say to do 1 million bonding and the rest out of, out of pocket. And then we can vote on that and amend that. And yeah, I don't know who that Robert rules guys was, but. Okay, let me share this big. again. I'll make it big. I think the order Mark just described works for me. So that'd be fine with me. I don't know about the rest of everybody. I think, um, well, let's look at the screen because that's, so our, our potential projects are the 22,760 plus 2250 and um, for the Hawken and Fence. And then the difference is the open will be the Hopkins, which the 9964 and the balance of that will bring us to the um, revised figure. Um, it's the million six eleven four hundred minus the sixty four six eighty, and which is um, a million five forty six seven hundred. So this is what. Um, all right. So it's looking better. I'm glad this was adding in the. Um, I did it the wrong way with a 64. So we're looking at still, if we don't bond at all, we have really 600, almost 700,000 that we try to keep 500,000 in reserve. That's before we've received the 23, 3% mm -hmm. surcharge from the town, um, which has not been changed. Okay. Well, I, 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 it might. I would like to know um, how people feel about bonding in general and not in this particular project. And maybe that would help us with our discussion. I don't like, um, I don't like bonding period in this subject. I think that you should only 
do what you can afford. That's it. And if it costs more, you just stop and you don't do anymore. It's pretty cut and dry, pretty simple as far as I'm concerned. You know, I was talking with somebody in, that's on the Amherst um, CPA committee and they're like, Amherst bonds everything with the idea that they want to keep as much flexibility for projects now. And this project for the next decade or two is going to benefit everyone living in Hadley for that next de decade or two. So some of the funds being paid over all those years is a way for people even 10 years from now to be supporting this project, um, but not to the point where we can't do other things. So it does keep our flexibility available. I'm, I'm not opposed to bonding. I think the town does it all the time for many things and that they're very good at doing it. Um, it also you know, keeps a, a good fund here for other things that come up. Um, APRs and, and other things that, you know, we want to be able to support. Um, Mark. Um, just to follow on to um, Edwin's, you know, to share my perspective, I would consider myself financially right of center. Uh, personally, I try to not borrow and except for big, you know, obviously a mortgage. Um, I won't buy a car until I can I can buy it out, mm -hmm. but that's me, and I can plan. I know I I know pretty much what I can foresee over the over the next five or ten years, you know, except for what you can't. But as a town, I see where bonding has a place because some other corner of the town community may need funding and if we wipe out everything by not bonding then a lot of these other projects may have a harder time getting funding um, so if we keep funding you know a healthy amount for what we've seen in the past and what we can expect in the future um, I like the idea of one million bonding and it seems like it's not a huge hit as the annual. And I, and I don't know if that's up to us or up to probably up to Linda, whether she bonds it for 10 or 15, that, that, that's, that's out of our hands, right? We no, just say, I, think, I think we can say what our preference is because yeah. I think that impacts, you know, 10, 10 years is 124,000 a year, which, you know, we take in 300,000 up to 600,000, depending on the state match. So 120,000 is a big chunk of that. Yeah. Or we do 92,000 uh, if we do 15 year, um, which you know is, is still a big chunk, but it, it's less of that. Um, but I think, I think that's part of the equation is um, how much we're comfortable, if, if we're comfortable at all. One thing we could do, you know, if we bonded 500,000 um, instead of, you know, 700,000, you know, being as low as 700,000, we still have a million too. My, you know, 700,000 plus the 500 reserve, if we did just 500,000. Um, and that, you know, that seems to be, to me, a, a good buffer. We tend to build this up over time until we get big projects. So um, that would be a way to kind of still not have so much just sitting there that is like, but would still give us more flexibility. So that's another possibility. Mark? Um, just to, trying to punt it over to Andy. Andy, you, if I'm correct, are replacing uh, Amy and you are here wearing your finance committee hat, whereas I'm wearing my planning board hat. So you already spoke, right? You're in favor. I mean, I, you know, finance is not my strong suit by any stretch. So do you have an opinion on, you know, if we bond half of it, you know, 500 or 700 or a million? My my opinion at this point is, uh, is and Mary is, is dabbling around the numbers. I was thinking of three quarters was coming into mind, uh, in that it left us with a pretty, you know, we're pretty much in the, in, in the same page there. It left us 
I think it was north of a, just north of a million dollars um, available in the uh, uh, in our funding to be able to address any projects that might come up in the next next you know few years. That uh, because it's easy in these these times, as uh, Andy Morris Friedman said, things are just expensive. You know, half a million dollars can go pretty quick. Um, if we need to do, you know, deck repair or something along those lines, where, um, uh, you know, if that's a bad example. But anyway, I'd like to keep a little bit more. Um, I'm, uh, you know, personally, I, I agree with you, Mark, that I don't want to spend more than we we have. But at the same time, with this recurring revenue, I mean, if you look at the ten-year bond, it was what I don't have the number up in front of me. A, one hundred and eighteen thousand a year. Um, for a million, it's one hundred twenty at the four point two five percent, which is what they think is a more realistic one for spring of twenty four. It's one hundred twenty four thousand for the ten so, year. So two hundred forty thousand cost you know, in today's dollars to um, to borrow that money, you know, um, and we know that with inflation, your your uh, your money down the road is is actually um, worth less so we can uh you know you you're better off buying what you can now and paying it off with uh, at today's dollars uh, eight or nine years from now denise i'm going to call on you um see if you would like to say anything to this yeah um thank you for bringing that speaker last week because i didn't know anything about bonding it was very helpful um and it's like a great opportunity um as i see it it's kind of the most responsible thing we can do with our taxpayers money because we can do projects now and projects later um and i have been sitting here wondering why we didn't want to fund the whole project because i think andy morris freeman makes a good point that this will probably get town support um and then we can see that it works um but three quarters I'm in favor of that as well. Just to be clear, I was referring to um, three quarters of a million dollars in bonding. Mm -hmm. still fund, we're still referring to paying, uh, funding the project minus the concrete pad. Right. right. Because so, the yeah. So basically uh, bonding half of it. Yes. Right. Okay. okay. 750, that's... <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, Excuse me. Edwin. Uh, Paul, what would you do if you didn't have CPA money? Well, it's a big enough dollar amount, Edwin, right? I don't think we would, we couldn't raise it uh, outside of CPA money. So, I mean, if we were to, if we're a smaller amount, small six figures, you know, we could go out and try to raise it. We, you know, look to the trustees, look to the town. It's a hard time to raise money, but that's what we try. Okay, so now, so that the school department is kind of dependent upon the CPA and vice versa, correct? We're hopeful. Right, so now, so what would the school department do without the CPA? What if we didn't have the CPA? Would, would this project go forward? Would it stagnate or what? Not sure we would have started it years ago, right, Edwin? I mean, you've all been a big key player. I mean, I think just the idea of starting a multi-million dollar project a, project a few years ago, even when it was cheaper, would have been more daunting without CPA. Mm, but would you have done it? We would have tried. I'm pretty stubborn. <laughs> Good. I hope so. <laughs> Especially now that we see the value, right? It's I've seen public the town has really come forward and really is using it and i just see the kids my you know my, my son went through hopkins and just seeing the value of these fields and how it is such a key component we're a small school yeah. before we we sort of fight above our weight in sports and i think it's a key aspect for for not every student so it's one piece of the puzzle for an education but it's, it's just see it as a really important piece of how these history and its future hopefully hmm. thank you Thank you. Andy, Morris Friedman. Uh, does it make a difference to the applicants? Do you have a preference as to which funding? 
Well, as you said, one is maybe easier to get town approval from if that's the only thing I, that would make a difference. I mean, as a just speaking purely as a school committee person, not as a citizen of Hadley, um, then as you said, maybe it's easier to get the vote that we need. I, I think you're right, Andy. Like we will, if you all approve this tonight, we will let folks know. We'll be very thankful and we'll try to corral support to come out. We will have probably a couple of athletes, student athletes presented at the town meeting to, to say why it's important to them. I think that's always compelling. I think you've made that recommendation, Andy, or somebody did last, last time. The, the CPA has a pretty good track record of if we approve it, 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 it tends to be approved at town meeting. But yeah, always, I think as Andy always, said, that this community is very supportive of the town, of the school, so. Um, I think if they see the value of what we've already done and what we plan to do, I would be hopeful as well. And it is the, you know, obviously the town vote that, that counts. Yeah, of course. Mark? I drive by uh, occasionally the Northampton ball fields, which again are, are town rec fields over on Route 9 there. I think that's, uh, I think that's like a little Sheldon bit. Field. Yeah, Sheldon Field. And I, I notice, I don't know if every year, but they have um, sponsor banners along the fence. Is that something that uh, Hopkins can do or, or has done? And uh, if so, do you foresee a funded by, by the CPA, you know, funds? That's something we're, we're doing on projects is putting our sign up to, to uh, let the you know, taxpayer know that this is where your your tax dollars went. And then you want to touch on that? Yes, definitely. We um, we want to uh, demonstrate our appreciation for exhibit our appreciation for the support that we've received um, from the CPA. There have been others too in the first phase, private donors who supported the project. We're not at a place in the project where there was space to do more permanent types of recognition? The short answer is yes, things like banners. And we do want the town to see how their tax dollars, how CPA funds are used for the benefit of the town. And certainly want to express our appreciation publicly for any and all support that we receive. Thank you. I just, thank you. I just did some quick, simple math. I took the million, the 124,000 for 10 years divided it by a million, multiplied it by 750,000, and that changes to a payment of about 93,000 a year. And I know it's not quite that simple, but that's at least ballpark. Mm -hmm. And then the 15 year comes out 60,000 a year. So I'd be more comfortable. I mean, I like the idea of 10 years to get this off yeah. the books. Um, unless we expect to bond another big piece. And then in the near future, then it's, you know, we only have so many funds. So the 15 year is a possibility as well, but 93,000 for 10 year and 69,000 for 15 year. And again, that's, you know, within the ballpark anyways, because it's not quite that simple. Um, and if we take in three to 600,000 a year, um, that's, you know, um, still leaves us 200 to 500,000 a year, depending on the state match available for other projects. Plus we would have, um, right, instead of 700,000, including the reserve in general, we'd have um, a million three in reserve um, in general. So um, that gives us a good, good amount. Andy, M? Okay, well, Evan had too good luck with my motions today, but I'm, I'm willing to try again, um, which is that we approve bonding to pay for 50% of this project. What was it, 700 and? Let's say 750. So you're, so you're technically uh, making a motion to amend the motion to describe the funding that you want. Yes, okay. exactly. That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Do you have a preference? Do you want to, would you please say whether it's 10 year or 15 year as well? I guess I'll go with the 10 year. Okay. But I'm open to, if somebody wants to change that, I'm, I'm you know, I, 
I'm happy to change it. I think that's a good good way to go. Um, I I guess I shouldn't second it because I did the original motion. Does someone want a second? Yes, I will. Mark. So we are. <clears throat> um, was that to go with the ten year bonding? Yes. And is that at seven hundred and fifty thousand, or are you not stating the amount? Well, we can discuss it, but that was half. Yeah, yeah. The value of the project. So okay. Uh, is it, uh, Andy? Is that what you meant? Um, no, I I meant seven hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, roughly fifty percent. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't want to tie it to a percentage because if the fund if the amounts <clears throat> change for whatever reason. It's going to get far more complex. Yeah. I also kind of want to leave the terms uh, to put some kind of phrase in there that says, you know, to uh, our, our best ability to negotiate terms. There, and I kind of want the treasurer to have a fair amount of input as to the, the length of time and the interest rate so they can go out and negotiate. I don't want to tie their hands any, any particular way by saying 10 years at this rate. No, uh, we recommend 750,000 and then some language to defer to the treasurer um, to secure that borrowing. I'm happy to accept those changes. Should we say Andy Morris Friedman made a motion to amend Mary's motion to include funding 750,000 through bonding at a suggested rate of, uh, at a suggested term of 10 years, but deferring to the- The treasurer's office. To the treasurer. That yeah. would be the town treasurer, right? Yes. 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 I, I think that makes it a little, a little trickier politically because we're not saying to town meeting exactly what we're doing, but I think we can say we're leaving it in the hands of the treasurer if she's the expert. Right. Does does what we vote on go into the warrant, or can we tweak it when we get feedback from Linda? Um, I did up a. Would that require another special meeting for us to vote? It, I think so. If we're going to change the, yeah. Uh, unless you want to change it on town meeting floor, which is a whole can of worms. Yeah. Can you do the math here? Because <clears throat> I do agree with with Andy that I don't I think Linda knows you know she's forgotten more than all of us know about funding so I would defer to her wisdom. Right. Best terms to be um, I don't know determined right. determined right. by the treasurer. Yeah. Right. Right. At at term yeah right okay in terms at such terms as determined by, the, to be the, yeah. by the office of the town treasurer yeah, yeah. Yes. It's, it's, as Mary noted she's going to probably lump this, you know, she is going to lump this in with all of her other things. And then, you know, that's going to. She right. said what we need to do is vote on bonding it and the okay. amount, and then she'll take it over from there. We don't have anything to do with the mechanics or the actual final. Um, and it'll all depend on <clears throat> interest rates and what they can do. But she said, you know, any amount so then, of so then do we just so then do we just take out that last clause and say that Andy Morris Freeman made a motion to amend Mary's motion to include that the approval uh, has seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to be bonded by the t town. Yeah, I think so. Okay. okay. And the, and the remainder coming from the uh, right. space and general right. fund. Right. 
Because I don't remember at town meeting that we determine how long, we don't determine the terms, we just determine the amount, Correct. I think. Right. Um, so here's, I'm going to share, um, here's potential language for the article. Um, and again, this will be tweaked by the, by the town administrator and the lawyer, perhaps. Um, but it, to see if the town will vote to transfer 90965 from the Community Preservation Act Open Space Fund, 705735 from the Community Preservation Act General Fund, and 750000 funded through bonding to the Hadley Public Schools for improving Hopkins Academy Athletic Fields Rehabilitation and Creation Phase 2, said funds to be expended under the direction of the Hadley Public School Committee and the town administrator, and to authorize the select board to enter into such agreement or agreements on behalf of the town as may be necessary, including a provision requiring said funds to be expended within two years of the date of town meeting approval, any unspent funds will automatically be returned for the foregoing Community Preservation Act fund by that date or take any action relative thereto. That Does sounds that, good. That sounds good, Mary. Uh, well, is that the appropriate, is that is under the direction of the Hadley Public School Committee and the town administrator? Uh, that I don't know. We're going to let the administration decide, I think. And I may be I may be picky, right? But requiring said funds be expended, that would, to me, say including the the bonding funds, and they will not be returned to the CPA committee if they're not spent, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so is this is this too? Is this? Too I'm, I'm going to let the town figure out the exact. All right, uh, that. fine, but fine. You're fine. right. You're right. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, do we say that they spend the bonding funds first and then any CPA funds come back? Or, yeah, that's... I, I don't think so. Oh, I, we're, I just, we're, bond, we're bonding against CPA funds anyway. Right. Mm. Uh, Mary, I, I, believe, I believe it's Annie, sorry, my video is acting up a bit. I believe that um, the article gets legal review, excuse me, the entire warrant gets legal review beforehand, so... What exactly. Andy, you pointed out would probably be caught by the attorney when they review the entire uh, warrant before it goes to town meeting. But the, it's bonding to the Hadley Public Schools, um, but then it's under the direction of the Hadley Public School Committee and the town administrator. Does that sound appropriate? Um, for Ann and Paul? Yeah. There's it, no mention of the CPA. No. It's going to, Mary, yeah. it's Sue Glowatsky. <laughs> We're sending the whole warrant um, to town council yes. uh, for review probably in the next couple of days. So I will get this out tonight or tomorrow, but it's, <laughs> at least it's a start. <laughs> and Mary, I do believe, Mary, it's, start, I do believe, oh, I'm sorry, Susan. I do believe that you are correct that um, the administration of the funding once allocated for this purpose would fall into the pre purview of the school committee and town administrator. However, again, as Susan Glotsky just pointed out, um, legal counsel will know. That's a legal <laughs> question of who then is in charge mm -hmm. of it. Right. Um, they'll, they'll fix it if it's not correct. Right. And let me just address what somebody said about the CPA. For some towns, especially if they have a CPA staff person, then the CPA committee sort of double checks to make sure, you know, things are being followed and things are, but because we meet so seldom, it falls on the town admin, it falls on the, the committee head or department head if it's a town committee or department, and if not, it falls really on the town administrator to approve the bills that come through. Um, and that's, that's as it's been explained to me, and which makes sense because we're really not in a position to be checking, you know, monthly or something on a project because um, we just, you know, that's not really how we're set up. Um, and again, right, so, Mary, Mary, we have that on our radar. Who, who just said that? Is that Joyce? Susan did. <laughs> Sue Glowatsky. Mm -hmm. Okay. We Sue. have that on our radar. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Any other discussion? We have a motion to accept it, um, all except for the concrete pad, and we have a motion to bond well, 750000 of the project. So according to Robert Rose, we first need to vote amendment. on Andy's amendment. Correct. And then if that passes, then we vote on the overall okay. motion. Right. Any other no. discussion on the bonding? Did anyone second Andy's motion yet? I'll I second. hope so, because we we sure discussed it. I'll second. <laughs> okay. Motion to approve. Oh, actually, I think no, I did. You did. Yes. You did. I, yes. I, I, I just was reading my notes. You did. Yes. <laughs> Any other discussion on the bonding? Um, all those in favor of bonding $750,000 of its project, raise your, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstain. All right, so we have- um, At uh, five, five zero one. one with yeah. Edwin being abstain. Thank you. All right, so that passed. So, so now we we're voting on the original, uh, uh, well, we're voting on the amended um, proposal, which is to approve. Um, is the amended original motion by Mary, right? Yeah, to approve the $1,546,700 project for phase two um, Hopkins Academy and with Half with 750,000 of that coming from bonding. As worded in what you just showed us on the screen, I think. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, I, I have a, a process question. Yes. I don't know, maybe I can't do this, you'll let me. <laughs> uh, I want the project to pass, uh, but I don't want to support the scoreboard and the parking lot. So I'm thinking of abstaining. Um, we still have enough votes to pass it, even if I abstain, if everyone else, if we have two abstentions and everyone else votes yes, it still passes, right? I believe so. We need a majority vote. Of those present. Oh, right, of those present. There's, okay. um, is it this one, two, three, four, five, there's six. So if we have okay. four, oh, oh missing, two. Okay, we're missing um, Cassandra and we're missing, um, the housing housing yeah okay um, all right so and then of course yeah um okay. yeah park and rec right yeah park and rec um okay i just wanted to make sure because I, I don't want it to go down no. um we the motion is to vote including the only thing that's being excluded is the concrete pad right. um, any other discussion all those in favor of the motion um, for approving the phase two with the everything but this the concrete pad and bonding it for six seven hundred seven hundred fifty thousand say aye. 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 One, two, three, four. Um, all those opposed. All those abstain. Andy North Friedman and Edwin abstain. Mm -hmm. So it passed CPA. Um, Paul and Annie, you probably know then this goes to finance and it goes to select board for their recommendations, whether they recommend it or not, it will go to town meeting because the CPA um, recommended it. And because of the, the bonding part of it will need to be um, two thirds vote, but there's not a separate ballot vote unlike other bonding projects. Um, passes at town meeting, then, then it's passed. And I'll, you know, you probably also know you don't just get the money up front, you need to submit the bills. Um, and I'll send you the, the Vader number to put on the bills and information on that. Um, you send them to, once they're approved by the school committee, you, you send it to the town administrator and it gets to the um, town accountant to be paid. So um, that's the process. It, it can only be used for what um, is, specified and um, any extra funds at the end will come back to the appropriate um, appropriate spot, whether it's the bonding or the CPA. Um, 
Mm -hmm. we, we didn't mention anything about the two-year time limit on this one, or I'm sorry. No, the that. treasurer is going to take care of that. Okay. Yeah. I just want to say thank you all for the support and the, the really good deliberation. You all were very thoughtful, and they say that as a school committee member and as, also as a Hadley resident. I appreciate how much time and thought you put into all this. This is it's important, but it's also it's really it's tough stuff. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, good luck. Yeah, and, uh, get the project going as soon as you can. Every second, it gets more expensive. Yeah, 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 and you know, I'm you want to come back before us and get more money because the project was too expensive. It wouldn't be the first time that happened. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Andy. you all very, very much. I want to echo what Paul said. It takes a lot of time, and you have to make uh, hard choices, and you have to do that responsibly. So I really, really appreciate it. It's really a privilege to work in this town and to yeah. work among town people, townspeople who donate so much of their time for the good of the community. I'm very appreciative. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Well, I'm looking forward to walking around that path. I know, me too, right? We'll get it done. I appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Much. Have a good night. I appreciate it. Good night. See ya. So do we have any other business on our? We do have a, just a little bit. It's not much. Um, I need to share the screen again. Let me get over to the right section so that I'm not making you dizzy. Um, it's easier just to do it this way. So here's our outstanding projects. We have close to 700,000 outstanding and all the ones in black are still going on and they're not coming due. So we don't have to discuss them unless anyone wants to. The ones in red are the ones we can vote to claw back. Um, the Russell School roof was supposed to be either, we did not, we voted last time to not extend it or we didn't <laughs> vote to extend it one way or the other. Um, and they did not spend it by the um, annual town meeting. So there's 8,000 there that can get clawed back. I checked with Molly Keegan and with um, Dylan um, Barstow Mans and, and the emergency rental assistance program is ended. Um, so the 25,000 can come back, was not spent and it can come back to um, the CPA. And the um, Russellville Cemetery project is done. It was originally 30,000 and it came in at 14, 190 and um, so 15,810 can come back um, and then that's the general fund um, and that and then the picnic tables at the elementary school still had time but the project's done so Tim Nyhart said we can return the $285.33 so um, and so that's one vote um, the ones in green are ones that have asked for more time the library windows and brackets, when we met last spring, they fully intended to be done with the project before the annual town meeting, um, but had trouble finding a contractor. It kind of got on the back burner. They want to do something, some, they want to mount the bracket somehow. Um, so they're asking for a year extension to um, still be able to use the CPA funds. These brackets came out of the Hooker School and um, they still want it incorporate it, incorporate it somehow in the library. Um, so they, Patrick asked for um, an extension of a year. Um, and then the Hockenham fence, um, this is the first ask for the Hockenham fence. Um, it was to be used by the special town meeting 22. It actually, that's the one, the one that got pushed off because we were for lack of quorum. So it's really just been a year and a half since it was approved. And oh. there's the 65,000, um, there's 4,400 left to be spent, which will be spent. It's just not sure it'll be by the special town meeting. So um, ask for your extension there. Mm -hmm. The other one I have highlighted here is the North Hadley Cemetery. It's not done yet, um, it's, but it's almost done. And it should be done by special town meeting, but we can wait to claw that back. The expected cost is 30,490. So there'll be close to another 30,000 coming back, but until the bills are all paid, um, don't, want it to, don't want to clock back yet. Um, mm -hmm. So the votes are um, the Russell School roof and the emergency rental assistance 
Russellsville Cemetery and the picnic tables. And, and one was historic housing and open space. So it's something coming back in each bucket um, for the 49,000. And then the one year extension is the library window and the Hockenham fence. And um, those are all consent votes. So they don't actually you know, take time in town meeting, which is good too. Can we vote on those? together or should we do them separately, do you think? Uh, are we, we're not gonna be voting on the tobacco barn, are we? No, this is just the clawback for the projects that are done and then okay. the one year extension for the library. When the, the tobacco barn was withdrawn, so there's okay. no vote needed. Um, okay. Yeah. It's, it's entirely up to you, Mary, if you wanna gang it together one, in one vote. I think one vote is fine. Um, I'll move that we claw back the four items listed here and that we approve the one year extension for these two items listed right. here the library window and the Hockenham fence I, I have one question about the school roof should we uh, uh, russell school should we second it first before we discuss? Oh, i'm sorry I'll second it. okay um go ahead andy uh those were supposed to be emergency repairs do we know why the money wasn't needed because they found the it wasn't nearly done. enough to do anything. I see. So the roofs is still need in, of repair, but they need more money than this. Okay. I think mm -hmm. they're they're grappling with a much bigger scope. Okay. It's my understanding. Okay. Fair enough. And we um we already extended that a year. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. Was, we've already extended it. Um, mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Oh. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Uh, passes. Um, Six o o. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. Then the other, the final order of business is, um, I like to set up our next meetings just because then everybody knows and townspeople know if they're looking for applying for anything. And um, we we don't have last, we were January last time because that's what the town had suggested for um, trying to get the Warren articles in, but we aren't as, ours isn't as time sensitive because it doesn't affect the town budget. Um, so they said doing it in February is fine. So um, I want to suggest, and we talked about this last time, last spring um, or last meeting, um, February 1st for applications due, and then um, February 13th and February 27th for our two meetings. President's Day is in between and school vacation is in between. So um, how, do, how does that sound to people? Oh, that sounds very good, Mary. Thank you for me. doing all the work. Thank you. This sounds excellent. Good. I'll put it on the website and um, we can plan for it. Good. I have one other quick thing before we go. Yes. No. Um, the coalition is putting together a CPA steering committee, which I'm interested in uh, being a part of. Thank and you. they're going to interview me this week. And I might need a letter from the committee, you know, saying that I'm not a degenerate. <laughs> Well, but you are Andy. So you yeah. can just lie. You can lie and say, uh, by default, it. you're from Hadley. You're a <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Right. I should have put it differently. Don't I quote me. Don't quote down. me, Scott, if you write the article on this meeting. Don't quote me on that. But um, uh, I just wanted to let the committee know if anyone else is interested, they had 36 applicants. So uh, we'll see what happens. I think it's really good to have a small town represented and a Western Mass town represented and Hadley represented. So thank you, Andy. I'll tell them that. Yep. I'd be glad to, I'd be glad to write a reference or recommendation or whatever. If, if I'm on the steering committee, I really won't have time to be secretary. No. Yeah. Nice try. <laughs> Mark, Mark Dunn, you weren't here for some of that. Um, we didn't get any takers, so... No, right. I, I heard that while I was driving. And this was the worst you know, fall with everything I've got going on. So by February, I should be moved into our new edition. And uh, I think I can stay on as 
secretary. So hallelujah. Wait, let's vote. Let's vote quick. <laughs> yeah. I move that Mark Dunn be secretary. Second. <laughs> Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 I abstain. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. You you do an excellent job. So that's that's fantastic. With your revisions. Yeah. Yeah, very easy to do. All right. Um, anything else? I would just uh, shout out to Alex LaMarche. Yay for Hadley Media. Yay. We're here. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to stop sharing. It's, it's a little bigger. Um, and, hey, and Andy, welcome back. Yes. Good to have you. Thank you. Good to be back. So we'll see you at town meeting. And I then we'll see you. Here. We'll meet, see you February 13th. <laughs> Okay. When is, thank you. When, when is town meeting again? October. It's not the thirty first. Twenty seventh. The week. The week. Uh, Twenty seventh. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's going to be a hot meeting. There's some good stuff in there. Is it? Oh yeah. Mm. October twenty seventh, my late mom's birthday. Mm. She would have been. I move that we adjourn. I uh, second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you all and thank you for.